Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see the bi directional shift register. Bi. Um, sorry, this marker is not working. Bi directional shift register. This marker is also not working properly, right? Now, as the name indicates, the bi-directional will do what? It can shift the bits to the left as well as to the right. Bi means in both direction. Before that, before that, let me give you a concept of division and multiplying. Let's say I have a two-bit number. I have one uh, zero, let's say. One zero, all right? This is the two bit number, okay? Let me write down the weights. This is two to the power one. This is two to the power zero. This is two to the power two, right? Let's say I'm shifting this number to the right. So the zero weight comes here and the one weight comes at two to the power two. Now the two to the power zero weight is empty. So I place a zero over here as we don't have anything. All right, now this, uh, one zero is the decimal equivalent of what? Is the decimal equivalent of two, isn't it? And this one zero zero, this is the decimal equivalent of four. So what do you have? By shifting the left bits to the left, we have the original bits multiplied by two. All right, shift left operation is equal to multiplied by 2 the original bit right now let me have let, let's say we have another number so I say remove this part of it all right so say I have a number one one zero right uh, so, so, so I shift it to the right, I shift it to the right. So 2 to the power 2 bit comes here at 2 to the power 1 and 2 to the power 1 bit comes here at 2 to the power 0 and 2 to the power 0 has been dropped out. Now have a look, 1, 1, 0 is the decimal equivalent for what? 2 to the power 2 is 4, 2 to the power 1 is 2. So this is the decimal equivalent for 6, right? And have a look, 1, 1 is the decimal equivalent of 3. So if you are shifting the bits to the right, if you shift the bits to the right, you are actually dividing the original number by 2. And you can take as many examples as you want and solve it for yourself. I took the same list. Alright? Now what do you have? Uh, now coming back to the register. Alright? How do we get the register over here? So let's say I, we talk about the a, a 4-bit register. So for that I need what? I need... Uh, I need is four flip flops, right? So let's say this is the fourth flip flop. You 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 draw it with me, all right? Because it will be taking time. D three, and we have Q three. Then we have this one is D two, and we have Q two. And I believe I I left a lot of space over there in between. But let's say this is D1 and the output is Q1. And finally we have this. That is D0 and Q0. Okay. So now what do you have? Uh, you have, uh, okay. First the things common that are common. So we have the clear inputs to all of them, right? These are the things common in between all. This is the clear input which has been given to all the flip-flops. And a simultaneous clock pulse has also been given to all the flip-flops. This is the external clock pulse. I should have used another color for it but that's fine, you know it. This is the external clock pulse. Now what do you have? How, how we have seen the, the one operation and that is a shift right operation. Now how do it, 
uh, it shifts in both the right and the left direction. So we have a mode control for that. Mode control input. And this is represented by this capital M. All right, and we have the values for it. If M is equal to zero, so we, if M is equal to one, so we have shift right. Yes. If M is equal to one, we have shift right. And similarly, if M is equal to zero, so we have shift left operation. All right. So let us draw it over here. This is the mode control input M. This is M, all right? Now this M is brought and this is given into a inverter, that is the NOT gate. And this is your M's complement, right? Now what do we have? We have a combinational circuit. Where is the black color? Here it is. Okay. So we have a combinational circuit, all right? And where is it? So it is over here. We have an OR gate, AND gate, two AND gates, and a single OR gate. In between these flip-flops, all right? We have two AND gates, and we have an OR gate. Well, I'm sorry if I'm not drawing them properly. These are the two AND gates again. And the single OR gate. And similarly over here I believe also we have it. Let me check it. So these are a little complicated diagrams. I will be referring to the book again and again. Okay, so... One, two, three, four. Yes, we have it, all of them. Alright, now what do we have? The the two AND operations are OR together and the OR is given into the input. Alright? The OR output is given into the input of the flip-flop. And the two AND operations are OR together. And similarly over here. Now what are the inputs to, to do these flip-flops, to, to these AND gates, sorry. So I'll have a look. Now, uh, to the first gate, to the first uh, AND gate, we have this M given. To all the first gates, we have this M given. So you give it like this. All right, and to the second gate, we have this given, this M complement given. Okay, and what are the other inputs? So have a look over here. Over here, we have the data write uh, input, DR. This is the data input that we are inputting into this so that it would shift to the right. So this R represents the shift right. And over here in the final gate we have DL. That is the input that represents to be shifted to the left. Okay. Now what do you have? You have this Q3. This Q3 is connected to this gate. Alright. So the colors may be mixed things up but I don't have other color. All right, so let me use the blue color. So I remove this first. Okay. So this was your original, this. Fine. And this is Q3. So let's say this Q3 is given to this gate. Fine. And this is your gate. Now what do you have? Q3 is also given, no, Q3 is not given somewhere else. Now the Q2, Q2 is given to the next gate. This Q2 is given over here. And this Q2, the same Q2 is brought 
over here so where should I bring it from okay over here here is this Q2 all right now what do you have Q1 so let me use the black color for Q1 so Q1 is connected to the next gate and back to this one so Q1 is over here is connected to this gate and it's also brought back to this gate all right so how do I bring it so I bring it in between the blue and the green color all right and finally this Q0 is I believe has to be connected over here Q0 is connected over here yes so for this Q0 let me use the black color again or the blue color would be fine this uh, Q0 has been connected over where is it okay so a little complicated diagram but you know you have to be careful with it okay now let's say we, 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 we want to uh, study its operation all right so what do you have if the mode uh, control input this is one all right if if this is one if this M is one so what do you have the value of this green would be zero right because it's the complement so this green is connected to this gate this output would be zero this green is connected to this gate this output would be zero this output would be zero and this gates output would be zero why is that why is that because a added with a zero is equal to zero so whatever be the value of the other input if one of them is zero the output of the AND gate is zero and similarly a ended with a one a ended with a one is equal to a so here we have it dr ended with one this will give us dr which means over here we have dr fine now over here again we have one and ended with q3 so this is q3 and we have output q3 similarly this is q2 over here is connected q2 one ended with q2 and then or with q2 so this or operation let me write this out operation that a or with a or with zero is also a fine now this q1 is connected to this end gate and q1 or with zero will give you a q1 again so this is just the serial input register just like that you are shifting the bits to the right dr q3 they are being shifted all right so if you have uh, q3 uh, q3 is given q3 is what q3 is basically the least significant bit of your that of the bits that you're storing all right if you want to shift right so you pr uh, give your least significant bit at the data right the data to be shifted towards right and it take the n number of clock pulses where n is the number of bits so here we require four clock pulses to store the data and further three more to extract it so we're not going into the detail of that once this mode has been reached this is the this is just similar to that serial input serial output q3 uh, uh, sorry here we have the data input over there we have the data output right and you can you you have loaded it and then how to extract it so you need n minus one clock pulses to extract it is that fine now this was the shift right mode now for the shift left mode what do you have for the shift left mode this uh, mode with mode input is made zero so which would make this thing one fine the green would be one so for that now I would have to remove uh, these parts of it so I will have to remove it and you're writing on a copy so you just use two different colors and you make yourself clear now using that property that anything added with one is a so you have over here <coughs> sorry so let's say we start over there with that uh, so one so the green color is one now anything ended with one would be the same thing dl red is zero red is zero and then we have so the output of this end gate would be zero then dl odd with this would be dl 
So DL, you provide your input over here at the final flip-flop and this would be the most significant bit. For shift right operation, you provide the most significant bit at the data left shift mode. Now have a look, this data has been loaded, Q0 is connected, right? This is 1, this is Q0, so the output would be Q0. This red is 0, so whatever be the value of the blue, this would be 0. Q0 ended odd with 0 would result in a Q0, which means the output of the next flip-flop is connected at the input of the previous. This is shift left, right? Now Q1 is connected over here, to this gate. So here we have Q1, here we have 1, so at the output we have 1. Over here we have 0, so the output would be 0. Q1 odd with 0 would be Q1. Q1 is connected at D2. Q2 comes back. Q2 comes back. Now what do you have? Over here you have a Q2 and you have a 1. So both ended would give you a Q2. Now this is 0. So this gate would give you a 0. Whatever be the value of DR. We are not providing anything at DR basically. Q2 odd with 0 would be Q2. And this Q3 would now be our final output. In shift right mode this Q3 is also our serial output. <coughs> Sorry. This is the final output, all right, the serial output. And similarly, over here, for the shift uh, right mode, for the shift right mode, over this Q0 is the serial output. This, for, this was for shift, uh, <coughs> sorry, this was for shift left. I said, I believe I said shift right, okay? So that's all about it. For shift left, you provide the most significant bit at this out at this uh, DL, all right. And for shift right, you provide the least significant bit at DR. So that's it. You can have another flip flop. The pre the output is connected to an AND gate. In a similar way, this combinational circuit will come in between any two successive flip flops, except after the last. It is present between be, before the first as well, between the first and the second, between the second and the third, the third and the fourth. After the fourth, you don't have it. So that's all about it. That's all about the bidirectional shift register. And I hope you got this concept also. If you're shifting the left, so you're multiplying the data by two. If you are shifting to the right, you are dividing your data by two. So that's all about it. See you in the next lecture with the universal shift register. So till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.